will be remembered by New Zealanders. Denise Roche. Eco. It's my privilege to rise to support this bill that's being brought for you, towards you from the Green Party. Um, this bill would better protect our most precious conservation areas from mining. And today it's receiving its first reading and it's very heartening indeed to hear the support that's coming across the House. We want to protect our national parks, wilderness areas and marine reserves because they're our most precious conservation areas. And any decision to allow them to be prospected or mined should be made by Parliament through an Act of Parliament, not, actors, not ministers acting alone. And notwithstanding what um, this side of the House has been saying, a judicial review is not going to cut it. It relies on a decision being made after a decision has been made. It also assumes that we must trust our ministers, and frankly I'm not sure that that will cut it with the New Zealand public either. We need this bill because our most precious conservation areas need greater protection because the government has a clear agenda to mine it, drill it, dig it up, sell it off, flog it off, whatever. <laughs> yes, take coal. We've just had a massive demonstration about Bathurst resources. Solid energy have got six billion tonnes of lignite for Uriah briquettes and diesel, which they're currently exploiting. There's deep sea oil prospecting, and of course, there's also fracking. New Zealand is on the cusp of a large exp expansion of the fracking industry, which to date has seen approximately 30 to 40 wells fracked in Taranaki since the early 1990s. And a huge amount of the country is open to fracking with permits that allow it currently standing at four and a half million hectares to be added another six million hectares to be considered for fracking at the moment. In the last year, we've seen a 170% increase in the rate of new wells compared to the average rate for the, previous, uh, for the previous 18 years. Several oil companies are also very interested in New Zealand's oil and gas resources and have indicated that fracking will also be on the cards. Tag Oil, for instance, has $120 million budgeted for exploratory wells and are pursuing what they themselves describe as a very aggressive program. And they've stated they'll be applying for consents very shortly. So the East Coast, Hawke's Bay and Horizons regions are just about to consent their first wells and we're entering, entering a new stage in fracking history in New Zealand. And the Gisborne District Council have admitted they don't have the expertise to regulate fracking. And in a recent report after investigating the Canadian situation, are asking for standardising resource consent conditions. The government has wiped its hands of this. You've left it up to small councils who have no resources to decide these issues. So that's why we need protection from our most pre precious, precious areas. This bill is simply about adding a large, another layer of, of democratic protection to what we have and hold for all New Zealanders. It's simply about making sure that this parliament, uh, the elected people of New Zealand, get to make a decision about whether Schedule 4 should in fact be exploited and whether in fact that will benefit New Zealanders. This bill is not restrictive. There is flexibility there. It is simply saying that these are the things that we hold dear. We've had it mentioned before, 50,000 New Zealanders marched to protect Schedule 4 and oppose mining in Schedule 4 places. And to some extent, the government did listen. In the Hauraki Gulf, where I'm from, Great Barrier Island had the Schedule 4 mining removed. That was no longer under threat. We ask that that side of the House that the National Party support us in this bill. It's for the benefit of all New Zealanders and it's something that we all must do. Paul Goldsmith.